dear students in the previous session we have discussed about the evolution of different life forms and today we will discuss about adaptive radiation biological evolution mechanisms of evolution and hardy van work principle during his journey darwin went to galapagos island there he observed an amazing diversity of creatures of particular interest small black birds later called darwin's finches amazed him he realized that there were many varieties of finches in the same island all the varieties he conjectured evolved on the island itself from the original seed eating features many other forms with altered beaks arose enabling them to become insectivorous and vegetarian finches this process of evolution of different species in a given geographical area starting from a point and literally radiating to other areas of geography that is habitat is called adaptive radiation darwin's finches represent one of the best example of this phenomena another example is australian marsupials a number of marsupials each different from other evolved from an ancestral stock what all within the australian island continent when more than one adaptive radiation appeared to have occurred in an isolated geographical area which representing different habitats one can call this convergent evolution placental mammals in australia also exhibit adaptive radiation involving into varieties of such placental mammals each of which appears to be similar to a corresponding marsupials for example placental wolf and tasmanian wolves are all marsupials now comes to the biological evolution evolution by natural selection in a true sense would have started when cellular forms of life with differences in metabolic capability originated on earth these essence of darwinian theory about evolution is natural selection the rate of appearance of new forms is linked to the life cycle or life span microbes that divide fast have the ability to multiply and become millions of individual within hours a colony of bacteria say for example a growing on a medium has built in variation in terms of ability to utilize a feed component a change in the medium composition would bring out only that part of the population say for example b that can survive under the new conditions in due course of time this variant population outgrows the numbers and appears as new species this would happen within days for the same thing to happen in a fish or fowl would take millions of years as life span of these animals are in years here we say that fitness of b is better than fitness of a under new conditions nature selects for fitness one must remember that the so called fitness is based on characteristics which are inherited hence there must be a genetic basis for getting selected and to evolve another way of saying the same thing is that some organisms are better adapted to survive in an otherwise hostile environment adaptive ability is inherited it has a genetic basis fitness is the end result of the ability to adapt and get selected by nature branching descent and natural selection are the two key concepts of darwinian theory of evolution even before darwin a french naturalist lamarck has already said that evolution of life forms had occurred what driven why use and disuse of organs he gave the examples of giraffe who in an attempt to forage leaves on tall trees and to adapt by elongation of their necks as they passed on this acquired character of elongated neck to succeeding generations giraffes slowly over the years came to acquire long necks nobody believe this conjecture anymore is evolution a process or the result of process the world we see 
inanimate and animate is only the success stories of evolution. When we describe the story of this world, we describe evolution as a process. On the other hand, when we describe the story of life on earth, we treat evolution as a consequence of a process called natural selection. We are still not very clear whether to regard evolution and natural selection as process or end result of unknown processes. It is possible that the work of Thomas Malthus on population influenced Darwin. Natural selection is based on certain observations which are factual. For example, natural resources are limited. Populations are stable in size except for seasonal fluctuations. Members of a population vary in characteristics, that is in fact no two individuals are alike. Even though they look superficially similar, most of variations are inherited etc. The fact that theoretically population size will grow exponentially if everybody reproduce maximally means this fact can be seen in a growing bacterial population. And other fact that population sizes in reality are limited means that there had been competition for resources. Only some survived and grew at cost of others that could not flourish. The novelty and brilliant insight of Darwin was this. He asserted that variations which are heritated and which make resources utilization better for few means adapted to habitat better will enable only those to reproduce and leave more progeny. Hence, for a period of time, over many generations, survivors will leave more progeny and there would be a change in population characteristics and hence new forms appear to arise. Now comes to the mechanisms of evolution. What are the various mechanisms underlying the process of evolution? What is the origin of variations? and how does speciation occur? Even though Mandel had talked of inheritable factors influencing phenotype, Darwin either ignored these observations or kept silence. In the first decade of 20th century, Hugo de Vries, based on his work on evening primos, brought forth the idea of mutations, large difference arising suddenly in a population. He believed that it is mutation which causes evolution and not the minor variations that is heritable that Darwin talked about. Mutations are random and directionless while Darwinian variations are small and directional. Evolution of Darwin was gradual while Devery's believed mutation caused speciation and hence called it saltation means single step large mutation. Studies in population genetics later brought out some clarity. Now comes to the very important principles during the process of evolution that is hardy van work principle which is also known as hardy van work equilibrium model or we can say that theorem or hardy van work law. The hardy van work equilibrium is a principle stating that genetic variation in a population will remain constant for one generation to the next in the absence of some disturbing factors. Allele and genotype frequencies in a population will remain constant from one generation to the next in the absence of other evolutionary influences. These influences may include mate choice, mutation, selection, genetic drift, gene flow and meiotic drive. In a given population, one can find out the frequency of occurrence of alleles of a gene or a locus. This frequency is supposed to remain fixed and even remain the same through generations. hardy weinberg principle stated it using algebraic equation. This principle says that allele frequencies in a population are stable and is constant from generation to generation. The gene pool means total genes and their alleles in a population remain constant. This is called genetic equilibrium. 
In the simplest case of a single locus with two alleles denoted with capital A and small a with frequencies of capital A is equal to P and that of the small a is equal to Q respectively. The expected genotype frequencies for homozygous of capital A is equal to P square and for small a is equal to Q square for homozygotes and for the heterozygotes it must be 2 P Q. The genotype proportions P square, 2 P Q and Q square are called Hardy van Vogt proportions. Note that the sum of all the genotype frequencies of this case is the binomial expansion of the square of the sum of P and Q. And such a sum as it represents the total of all possibilities must be equal to 1. Therefore, the whole square of P plus Q is equal to P square plus 2 P Q plus Q square is equal to 1. A solution of this equation is Q is equal to 1 minus P. Hardy van Vogt proportions of two alleles, the horizontal axis shows that the two allele frequencies P and Q and the vertical axis shows the expected genotype frequencies. Each line shows one of the three possible genotypes. Five factors are known to affect hardy van Vogt equilibrium. These are gene migration or gene flow, genetic drift, mutation, genetic recombination and natural selection. When migration of a section of population to another place and population occurs, gene frequencies change in the original as well as in the new population. New genes or alleles are added to the new population and these are lost from the old population. There would be a gene flow if this gene migration happens multiple times. If the same change occurs by chance, it is called genetic drift. Sometime the change in allele frequency is so different in new sample of population that they become a different species. The original drifted population becomes founders and the effect is called founder effect. Microbial experiments shows that pre-existing advantageous mutations when selected will result in observation of new phenotypes. Over few generations, this would result in speciation. Natural selection is a process in which heritable variation enabling better survival are enabled to reproduce and leave greater number of progeny. A critical analysis makes us believe that variations due to mutation or variation due to recombination during gametogenesis are due to gene flow or genetic drift result in change frequency of gene and alleles in future generation. Coupled to enhance reproductive success, natural selection make it look like different population. Natural selection can lead to stabilization, means in which more individual acquires mean character value. Directional change means more individuals acquire value other than mean character value or disruption means that more individual acquire peripheral character value at both ends of the distribution curve. So my dear students, today we have discussed about the adaptive radiation, biological evolution, mechanisms of evolution and hardy van Berg principle. In the next section, we will briefly describe the evolution in special context to evolution of man that is the evolution of human beings. Thank you.